And I love the fact Adam Chera is really reading off him and just getting to his chest and, and making it uh, a one-two punch there. Crips to Chera. So the Saints by goal as we start the second half of this pre-season pre practice game on KO Sports. Steals in among the action for the Saints. Kicks forward toward Butler in the wrestle with Newman. Getting in there to toe poke the footy forward for the Blues was Williams. Wood might have been grabbed high. He's brought to ground. Umpire's going to ping him instead. Been lively, Mason Wood. Not a great start for him, but again, someone that just gets thrown around ad nauseum. Spends a fair bit of time up on the wing. High half forwards where he made his mark. He's had a good first half anticipating and turning over some footballs, which he gets another opportunity here to do. Oh, he's done a couple of nice things, Mason Wood. He disrupts things there, gets it to Jones. Jones is going to kick to King in a two-on-one inside the forward 50. McGovern's across to intercept. Yeah. We've heard it so often in the West, and now we're hearing it here at Icon Park. Yeah, good luck, Max King. Zach Jones just need a little bit more composure. It's a tough game. It's a there. tough and gets fast game, but it was just two-on-one. Max King finding out of his weight division well and truly there. Wiedering. Outside the defensive 50 to Durden, who's been okay for the Blues, the youngster. Newman just calmly guides the kick towards Silvani. Can't collect cleanly on the half volley. Came in over the top there with a high tackle on Patton. And Patton's away. Rolls onto the right boot. Sends a high footy inside the 50. King with a run at it. Pulls it in. Oh, Saints fans would love to see that at full forward. The big fella going up strong and dragging the mark in 30 out. They're just getting better at the kick. To him, isn't it? It's, connect, it's connectivity over a long period, which which builds that ability for a key forward to, to have that trust in exactly what's going to come in front of you. And so, the mids of St Kilda are starting to figure out what Max King likes, and it's exactly that. If you see sp space and grass in front of him, just seven iron for him, seven iron, and he'll have a nice run and jump and finish it off. Can he finish off his work? Not quite on this occasion. First score of the second half, a minor one for the Saints, puts their lead at. Seven points. King kicked a goal in that second term. Leading goal kicker last season for the Saints with 38, including 25 goals in his last 10 games. So he really finished the season off quite strongly. McGovern from halfback for the Blues to Chera to F uh, Fisher in the centre of the ground. Kennedy almost got caught by Billings. Newman almost got caught by Ross. They've worked this out, though, the Blues, and Durden enters the 50 to Kemp who's attacked the ball hard all game and finally latches onto one. He's going to lay it off to Chera. Just went to 15.1, that one. Umpire tossed and turned. Did he want to pay it? He did. Uh, but that's beautiful. Beautiful from end to end from the, the Carlton side. And that's exactly replicating what they were doing in the first quarter. They were going quick. They were just first option, give it, and the game will evolve in front of you. So <laughs> the defenders there for the Saints had absolutely no hope as that punching ball came in towards forward 50 for Kemp, who's laid it off to Chera. So plenty of expectation around young Adam Chera. His first season in Navy Blue, sets sail for home. And plenty of cheers from the legend stands after that. Carlton players rush to Chera from everywhere. His first in anger in Navy Blue. And the Blues get the first of the second half. It's a bit of a moral dilemma really, isn't it? In terms of first goal for the club, it's not an official goal, <laughs> and you're playing fullback. Three Carlton players took it upon themselves and said, look, I'm not counting this one. I'm going to stay back. Jordan Boyd, Oscar McDonald, and Jacob Weedering said, we'll wait till the big stuff, Richmond, round one. You kick a goal for us that day, and we'll get down and celebrate with you. But nice finish, nice purposeful build-up. There wasn't much the St Kilda side could do about that. It was just silky skills from end to end. Carlton fans would love to see... Chera out there and finishing nicely there. Stands alongside Brad Crouch at the stoppage. Nick Barlow with you on KO Sports. John Peterson calling the action. The Blues back within a point. Crips at the stoppage. Powerful. Just rips the footy away. Sheds the tackle. Handball to Kennedy. Kennedy inside the 50. Silvani slides in. This run of goals to the crowd's end is continuing on the run of scores center clearance i'd imagine paddy cripps is up to seven eight plus clearances already across his match and doing a lot of his great work at the center square bounce his ability just to, to shrug his shoulders get his arms free and identify the player in space in that occasion it was matt kennedy he does it as well as anyone paddy cripps 
So Jack Silvani kicked two goals to this end in the opening term with the set shot here, can't add a third. Misses to the near side. So 10 goals kicked to that legend stand end here in this game so far. And we are tied at 45 apiece. Carlton led by as many as 27 late in the opening term. The Saints whittled it back with a dominant second term. The Blues with the ascendancy here early in the third. Long kick in from Webster. Pitanay to Hewitt to O'Brien. Jams the Blues inside the 50. Durden tried to protect the space, but Sinclair was able to reach across and thump it out of play. And that controversial uh, champion data, elite category. I think Jack Sinclair may have been the only player from St Kilda that was in that. I may be wrong, but obviously that ability to close down opposition and give them a little bit of bounce off half back, well and truly noted. Had a very, very nice year last year, career year, Jack Sinclair. Runner-up in the best and fairest. The stoppage, Fisher to Owies to Silvani. On the run this time, low kick to full forward. Joyce up to meet it for the Saints. Couldn't quite gather it cleanly and the pressure came quickly. Campbell tumbles through for St Kilda. Handball cut off by O'Brien, who hooks it around the body toward full forward. But Sinclair's back there once more for the Saints. Gallops away inside the defensive 50, spreads it wide, Billings goes up, can't reel it in. Then got bumped off the football, free kick and advantage here to the Saints. Sharman's away with it, low kick up toward half forward to Higgins, who immediately plays on and wants to move the football. Skies it to the edge of the arc, O'Brien back with the flight, dropped the mark. Able to mop up, finds Fisher by hand. Fisher sends the Blues back the other way. Charlie Kerr well on a target and battle. Worked him under it nicely. He's been promising down back for the Saints. Maybe just settling into a position after being tossed around in the early part of his career. Williamson at half back for the Blues to Wiedering, who nurses the kick to Fisher. Wasting no time, O'Brien tries the slips catch, can't quite hold on. Found the handball up to Saad. Arches the back and kicks inside the 50 to Charlie with one hand. One all there, <laughs> uh, battle. Had his moment, nice little edge under just moments before on Kerno and Kerno said I'll oh, uh, just up you one there one on one coming in a dirty ball from Adam Saad just able to work him underneath with Charlie Kerno and put the one mid up and he's got a big mitt which wrapped in the Sharon and we'll get a perfect view of this one to see if he can go make good of his work had a shot in that second term from long range he arcs around and kicks an absolute wobbler toward goal. Not quite his best effort, Charlie. It's good enough to give the Blues back the lead, but uh, not want to see better than that from the set shot in future. Yeah, I think he, as he went out, I think he started to second guess himself and <laughs> pulled up on the kick. So, again, similar to the Jack Higgins ones early on, you'd think Charlie Kerno has it from 45, and he uh, could have just gone back and punted it post height. King threw his hands after the kick from battle up the line for the Saints. Jones is there, kicks off a standing start, wobbling football, read well by McDonald for the Blues. Free kick off the ball here, going to St Kilda. So the out of zone umpire paid that at half back for the Saints, and Oscar McDonald left frustrated as he has to toss the football to Jack Higgins. Nothing worse. Higgins to half forward for the Saints, Charman in from the side, Wiedering had best position, jammed it on the boot to McDonald. To O'Brien, nurses the boundary line with his kick over the head of Silvani. Fisher left it behind. Campbell got down low, picked it up. Handball to Wilkie. Did well. Got the handball away to Steele. Seven metre kick to Clark. Handball back to Wilkie. The Saints willing to possess the football. Joyce dropped a sitter. He was able to regather. Kicks up the line. Pitanay across. Almost a ruck tap there in the marking yeah. contest. And the umpires have found a free kick again to the Saints here yeah. in King. Stiff. Oh, well, not stiff. It was badly executed there by the Blues. They had four to one. Max King being the only one. And the Shepherd was a bit crude as the ball was in the air. So King offloads into the pocket the and finds his direct opponent. Not very good either. Weedering in the goal square to Jack Nunes. 29 today is Jack Nunes and gets a 50. He may get a 100 right here if he does it right. Long gets out of the way. So players are getting a little bit more clever at that when they give away the 50. Long went on with it a little bit there as well to the umpire. So it be interesting to see how tightly they adjudicate the, uh, the new rule in terms of respecting the umpires. O'Brien swings it wide and now Newman's inside the 50 to Kerno, 
who charges out and clutches it to his chest. Now, he could kick the distance here, Charlie Kerno, but from his last effort where he came around on the angle and tried to punch it from 45, that diminishes my confidence. But naturally, you'd think Charlie Kerno, who's going back with a bit of purpose here, should have a crack at him and have a licence to have a crack at him from 55 plus. He made the journey on the run from the other end earlier with the stand rule. It should give him a little bit of help. Hasn't kicked one yet, Charlie. From outside the arc, Kerno launches it from downtown and hits the left-hand goalpost. Got every bit of that. Just not quite straight enough. Press on here, it's, uh, Carlton. Every player in the front third for them trying to put a bit of pressure on the precise ball use of the Saints. So need to be clean here, St Kilda. Patton legged after he kicked it. Goes to the outer side. Williams does enough to thump it out of play, opposed to Burns. A couple of the injured Carlton players watching on. Harry Mackay up there, Jack Martin as well among them. Both in a, a little bit of a match sim earlier on before this game. Mackay, a big chance for round one with that uh, joint soreness in his foot. Jack Martin really hasn't had a run at it well, even since his Gold Coast days, Mick. Yes, he um, plays with such tenacity that Jack always puts, him, puts himself in, in harm's way with uh, contact injuries. So potentially Michael Voss and his crew have thought today's game, protect him from himself. Yep because he could be such a weapon for them. And that's a, a big thing for Carlton is if they can get all their sight out on the park and avoid some of these injuries that have beleaguered them over the last couple of years, then uh, that's where they think they, you know, they just need a bit of that continuity and that, that experience playing as a group. Williams to Saad, the dynamic duo off halfback. Saad links up with Kennedy, darts it inboard, knocked away from Chera. Clark's there for the Saints to Jones. Higgins hand pass clever. Releases Long, who has to slip the tackle of Williamson. Couldn't quite, got caught, not holding the ball. The Blues force the turnover. Newman, McGovern through the centre, through centre field, and now out to Kennedy. Sard's hemmed in, oh, puts the step on Sharman. Goes inside the 50. Cripps presents, can't mark. Oh, he's a hand to it. Philp comes flying through for the Blues inside the arc. Cripps goes to ground. Can't have it to brush off a teammate there as he fed the footy out to Chera. Left foot kick. Oh, that's a wonderful goal. Adam Chera showing every bit of his class. His second of the term. And Carlton out to an eight-point lead. Great finish, Adam Chera. But watching that live, it won't do its service on the monitor in terms of Adam Chera's ability. Just to understand he couldn't impact that contest. So... On the bottom of the replay here, Adam Chera will probably come into play at some stage, but the, everyone got drawn to the contest. All the white jumpers, as you see, got drawn into the player with the ball. Adam Chera just held his width very nicely and from 50 metres out had ample time. Left foot, right foot, it wouldn't have mattered. And he has his second. You notice the, the, the rise in applause as well from yeah, the, the legend stand. The fans are pretty excited to see their new man. This, uh, this, these stands remind me of, obviously, the past two years in Victoria. It's been a bit grim, hasn't it, Joel, in terms of watching a lot of Netflix and catching up on past series. And the series of Underbelly used to have their little <laughs> meetings with the, the Carlton Club over in the, in the deserted grandstand. And they would be loving the output of Adam Chera here on the, uh, the patch of turf that is so synonymous with Ligon Street and, and the area of Carlton. Yeah, there would be a lot of Carlton fans just looking forward to seeing the number five running around doing good things in the midfield once more. Yes. So Mirkov gets a chance in ruck here for the Blues, the 210 centimetre former volleyballer. Saints with a stoppage clearance, tumbled inside the 50. Newman read it well. He sends it back the other way toward the wing. Hill runs onto it, can't keep it in. That's a Carlton club. It's Carlton crew. Carlton crew, was it? The day from Underbelly, but... Uh, Carlton again, third quarter, just absolutely dominating around the ball and and their ball use so much better and so much crisper. Charlie Kuno looking dangerous, whereas the Saints, they've just gone stagnant. Nick Barlow with you on KO Sports, giving you an insight into this game and to Melbourne's underground crime scene. 
Chera down the Fa line. It fascinates me. That's <laughs> Wilkie got a fist in there. Battle, who's been used in defence today for the Saints and been pretty good. Campbell, first season at St Kilda. Jones back to Ross, who kicks an absolute wounded duck up to the Ooh. wing. Free kick going to the Saints. Newman did everything right, right until the end. He just was a bit zealous against Billings. So Billings offloads to Jones. Third season at St Kilda. Spears the pass inside the 50. It's Hayes. And here's Jack Hayes who's going to offload it into the pocket and find Brad Crouch. So Hayes, the train on, are out there along with Leanett and Crouch from the pocket. He's going to chip short to Long. Didn't get to him on the full. So they put themselves under pressure here, the Saints across half forward. Billings kicks to the top of the square, up high, Wietering. Gee, he pulls in a wonderful mark, twisting in the air as he dragged it in. Plays like a forward, doesn't he? Wietering, it's becoming synonymous with those really good key defenders now, they're encouraged to go for their marks. When they're in the air, just go for your marks if you feel like you can mark it. And he's done that a couple of times. I know that the key, key backs aren't the sexiest players out there. I love watching Jacob Wiedering. He's a good player, good oh. player to watch. Carlton have so often, and I'll let you call this a little bit of passage play, but talk about Carlton's defensive stocks in a second. Wilkie inside forward 50. Again, Hayes was the target. Long met solidly in the tackle inside the 50. Set a field to Newman. Handball to Chera. Made O'Brien work for it along the boundary. Can't keep it in. And Carlton, defensively, for a number of years, have just played that one-on-one -on -one defence. So, you know, Liam Jones and Jacob Wiedering have, have so often been under siege and been in one-on-one -on -one situations that support drop-off defence from wingers and halfbacks hasn't been existent for the last couple of years. So they've been forced, really, to play that sexy role and, and do some really dynamic things in one-on-one -on -one contests. Campbell at the stoppage. Saad had the handball knocked away. Jones went in for the Saints, wrapped up by Chera. He's showing he can do some of the tough stuff as well. All up inside forward 50 for St Kilda. Saints yet to kick a goal here in this third term. Carlton with two goals, three to lead by eight points. They lead by 20 at quarter time. The Saints by a kick at the half. Scrambled outside the defensive 50 for the Blues. Bounces high along the boundary line. Boyd's ridden into the turf by Butler. Yes. It's interesting, isn't it? He was tackled over the, the boundary line. I feel like that second action, and it wasn't dangerous but there was a second action pushing Boyd's head into the ground does it become null and void once it's out of play and blown dead or that should nearly be paid sometimes become a little bit worse yeah. if, it's, if the ball's already out of play it can become more of a, an egregious action if you like, Jones burrows in at the bottom of the pack can't clear it, um, the Saints would love to see the best of Dan Butler again this year yeah they would, they would, he's up at the stoppage at the moment, it can be the, the graveyard shift that high half forward, he found that last year, the year before he had a dynamic year so it's all about that work rate and effort as a high forward. Hopefully he gets on the end of a few. Jones saw behind play here as the Blues move it forward through Cripps and Hewitt, who kicks to full forward. Kemp in the pack, Saints everywhere. Joyce is out the back for St Kilda to Hill. That's oh, well worked. Lovely kick, beautifully weighted, and Steele runs onto it just inside the junction of the 50 of the boundary. So St Kilda had all the numbers there on the last line of defence, and now this is why Jack Steele takes the mark and has to go back and take his time because nothing was ahead. Kicks up the line. Ooh. Campbell just ran into the space there. They cleared the runway for the big bloke. And Murkov's on. So Murkov's going to have a look in the ruck there for Carlton. Campbell's kick into the centre corridor. He's done that a couple of times today and it hasn't come off either time. Always has been rewarded with a free kick for the Blues. Inside the 50, Charlie stretches, can't mark. Out the back is Sinclair for the Saints. Now Wilkie, acre of space here for Billings to mark on the city side. Out in front of the construction site. Wheels away, Sharman. And a two-year contract extension with his form late last year. On board to Sinclair. And now Hill, as they try and generate some run against St Kilda. Hill inside the 50, King front spot, Sard out the back. And the Blues have numbers again. Clearing kick through Boyd. That's a good one as well, and Kemp comes up and he's able to mark just behind the wing. Shown some signs today, Brody Kemp. Pretty highly rated. We've spoken about him a little bit, playing forward today as opposed to that defensive role. He turned the kick over there. And Durden's been another one who's uh, who's been good for the Blues. Yeah, lively, isn't he? He kicked a, well, he played his part in a few little ro uh, goals early where he provided the pressure and those defensive acts which opened up the opportunities for his other forwards to get on the scoreboard. So they'd love playing with him. I'd imagine guys like Durden and Owies. 
Hewitt here at the stoppage for Carlton. Up towards Silvani, knocked away by Hill. Lean it with a touch for the Saints. Into traffic, steal, had it taken away. O'Brien dives in. Oh, the blind turn from Cripps got nailed in the tackle. Turnover forced by St Kilda. Higgins to Billings through the centre of the ground to Hill. He got taken by Williamson, caught holding the ball. Well, he might have been a bit stiff there, Bradley Hill. Got his hand to the ball, but now the Blues are out. They are off. Oh, oh Setterfield just couldn't judge it as, as he'd hoped. Now the Saints are out. And there's numbers here for St Kilda if it'll sit for Higgins, who slips the tackle. Oh. oh, and then he got driven into the turf by Boyd, and McGovern's fallen awkwardly there, coming over the top of Long. There are bodies Everyone's flying stopped. everywhere here at Icon Park. Just needs the Benny Hill music just for now. <laughs> this is nothing's going right for anyone. Long was the only one who hadn't stopped. He kicked inside the 50 and turned it over. McGovern's back to his feet, shrugging <laughs> off the trainer, which is good to see. I'll tell you why he was back to his feet. Carlton had the ball. He was in space. He wanted, he wanted to kick. kick. <laughs> and we'll go back and watch this tackle, bottom left, around. Boyd, great effort and intensity, but he just lingered and he oh. slung Higgins into the turf really late. So watch his space on that tackle from the boy from Spotswood. And then McGovern coming over the top of the pack. Here is Leanit again, a Sturt product. Kicks it up the line, looking for Ross, who had to turn defender in the end in the marking contest and fist it out for a throw-in. So Leanit and Hayes after a couple of vacant spots on the Saints list. of course, as Mick mentioned earlier, Port Adelaide, 23 games for the power. His last game for the power was actually against St Kilda in round 18 of last year. So against the side which he's featuring for today. Butler at the stoppage. Crouch tried to work it out to Patton, who made his way back to the football. Kicks inside the 50. King wrestles with Wietering. Brings it down to Gresham. Almost lost his balance. Handball back to King who squares it up to the top of the goal square. Woods up high, can't drag it in. Setterfield did well in defence. Williams combines with Setterfield and now to Kennedy. Three of the former Giants inside the defensive 50 for the Blues and Kennedy goes out to Durden. They, they worked that nicely there, Carlton, from under pressure. Durden down the line to Silvani. Silvani on over the top, back to Durden, who's continued to run on the outer side. Now he goes back in board to Silvani. There's just the two of them waxing out there. And Silvani pokes it inside the 50. Oh, he can't take the mark. Patton was right there with him every step of the way. Crouch now for the Saints. Handball to Sinclair. Tries to slip Durden. Couldn't quite. Handball found battle though. Wood, Clark and the Saints away. Down that outer side. Clark's kick turned over. Straight to Boyd. Just needed to find a mark there, didn't they? The Saints just to take the air out of... Defensive efforts from Carlton, but over handball. Looks like there's some tired players out there. Things starting to get a little bit scrappy as Saad lasers one inside the 50. And Brody Kemp's on the end of it for the Blues, 45 out. That is what Adam Saad can provide, that lethal left boot. So Brody Kemp, we've spoken about being important two games last year didn't kick a goal the ACL injury in 2020 saw him miss all of the season after being the 17th pick in the 2019 draft from just inside the 50 hits Punch. it and hits it beautifully very good finish very good finish and just the normal run up didn't deviate gave himself every chance and kicked through the ball and gets himself on the scoreboard so Showing some signs as Kemp. In terms of that dynamic in their front half, you'd imagine Jack Martin, clearly Harry Mackay, become available. They'll slot back in. At what expense does that come? Because we've mentioned the, the forward pressure and now of Durden and Oe. You, you do need, at minimum, one of those players to provide the selfless chase and tackle and give yourself an opportunity at ground level. Zach Fisher, he spent some time at half forward up around the ball. Matt Kennedy... Similar story, 50-50 midfield forward. So the competition for spots is strong. Kemp will need a, a strong outing today and into next week to give himself every opportunity. Former Docker and son, Mick Barlow with you here on KO Sports. Kennedy takes it out of the middle for the Blues. Tumbles a kick inside the 50. Bouncing ball to the pocket. Wilkie's there to step it across. 
Carlton fans even happy with the stoppage at this stage with a, a smattering of applause. It is. They like, they just like the action out there. I think they just, they can smell the liniment. They can hear the bodies crashing, so they're just enjoying the theatre of it at the moment. So still just the two goals kicked to the Royal Parade end. The rest of the scoring, scoring done to this legend stand end. Free kick in the ruck contest going to Campbell. We talked about the backdrop here in the, into the city of... Uh, the greatest city in the world would, would like to claim it. It's had a yeah. tough couple of years, though. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's uh, very, very visible here with this construction going on. The Saints shoot it across the centre of the ground to Billings. Billings to Hill. Hill out at right half forward. Goes inside the arc to no one at all. Forwards throw their hands up in despair and Williams able to easily pick that one off for the Blues. Dangerous kick to Setterfield. Made it work. Goes by hand back to McDonald. Donald to Boyd for the Blues. Now to Wietering. He tries to nurse it up the outer side. And a free kick's going to go to Carlton here. Cripps was being held onto. Sends it up the line to Silvani. In city wing. Called to move it on. He chips short to Owies, who's been lively again here for Carlton. As you mentioned, Joel, both teams coming out for a little bit of air. 26 travelled, third quarter. First real competitive hit out, so a little bit of possession without penetration as the Blues go inside forward 50. 3-3 three, three for the Blues in this term. Just the behind for the Saints. A free kick here for the high tackle going against Leanett. Off and the, it's Brody Kemp. Off the ball umpire. Um, Razor Ray popped that one. So, again, got to admire the connection between umpires and, and understanding playing your role. So not picked up by the the immediate officiator but Razor provided the support so Brody Kemp could go back and kick a couple within five in front of that legend stands I'm sure we'll get a cutaway to this place. this uh, <laughs> this uh, drop of the the city skyline which is tremendous at the moment after Brody puts it post height so Brody Kemp out in front of the fans in that legend stand sends it toward goal oh. for two in the quarter just misses to the left-hand ah, side. There it is, the pan. Points. So you can see behind the legend stand, the, the view down the southern side to the city. Over Icon Park, oval number one out there where the Carlton Cricket Club have played. And that construction site for this massive redevelopment here at Icon Park. Did you ever get to an AFL game when it was, football was played here? I don't think so, no. I feel, I, I feel like I came to one really young. West Coast versus Carlton. Kudafiti's kicked five and had 40 or something something <laughs> along those lines that, that happened pretty frequently did, did the prince of the navy blues he was uh, he owned this place did, did Cooter back in the day there were plenty who probably lay claims to ownership here at uh, at prince's park over the years both on field and off you would imagine billings up the line Hayes. for the saints Spoiled. Hayes floats in spoiled by king in the end goes to ground along the boundary line and can't keep it in. So he's sort of a, a bit of everything, Jack Hayes. He can play forward. He so can... he's playing the ruck at the moment. Yep. Sorry to cut you off there, Joel. But yeah, a bit of forward and, and mixing his time into the ruck. So Tom Campbell might be having a spell. And Jack Hayes can come and play that 20% ruck role, which he does very well. To a plomb, beats out Pitney there. Best on ground in the Sandville Grand Final last year. And the South Australian State Captain gave Patrick Cripps a little bit of what for off the footy there as well. Did Jack Hayes make his presence felt? Blues have worked it down the line on the broadcast side here. Silvani, high kick inside the 50. Puts it onto the head of the pack. Always is among them. Bounces to the boundary line. McKenzie slaps it across for a throw in. Patrick Cripps just behind the ball having a breather. Yeah, McKenzie coming off a pretty good season in defence for the Saints. Outside, Jack Nunes at the moment. The ball is tossed back in. Hayes again in ruck. Worked under that one by Silvani. Hewitt goes in. Tackled by Crouch. Silvani tries to wrestle it free from in there. Durden throws a boot at it. Sinclair does more so effectively. Picks up the line. King comes sprawling forward. Can't take it with him. Williams intercepts for the Blues to O'Brien. Low kick looking for Durden. Sinclair might have just worried him out of it. Late in the piece here in this third term. We'll have a toss back in. Carlton lead by 20 points at quarter time. The Saints kicked four goals in that second term to lead by six at the half. And the Blues with the only three goals here in the third quarter. And 
They lead by 15 points at the moment. Pitanay to Chera. Chera's squaring kick to full forward. And again, we see Tim Membry going back behind the ball late in the piece. And he cuts this one off. And it brings us to the end of the third term. And again, all the scoring done to the legend stand end in that quarter. Just two goals to the right of your screen so far in the game toward the Royal Parade end. They both came to the Saints in the opening term. Carlton with three goals, four in that third term. The Saints only managing the, the behind through the set shot to Max King very early. And at three-quarter time here at Icon Park, it's the Blues 8-12-60 to St Kilda, 6-9-45. Two goals to Chera, two to Silvani for the Blues. Kennedy, Kemp, Durden and Owies each with one for the Saints. King, Butler, Higgins, Membry, Wood and Campbell each with goals. Overcast day here in Melbourne. A cool summer morning for football in this second of the AFL's 2022 practice matches on KO Sports. There's a quarter to come. It's the Blues by 15 points. We'll be back here at Icon Park in a moment on KO Sports. So Hayes getting a run out there. So too Leonard as trade-ons for the Saints. And the Blues without a number of stars through injury to start their pre-season campaign off. Fogarty gets an early touch. Well, he and handballs what team he was playing for. Straight to Hunter Clark, who handballs the Saints inside the 50. McDonald dragged down. Clark goes back in for St Kilda. Handball to Membry. In on goal. Snaps around the body for the lightning start to the final term. Can't quite make it count. Again, we see a lot of the scoring being done that legend stand end, it's been rather remarkable the way it's unfolded. Gee, Silvani dug the knee into the yeah. ground there as he dragged in the mark. Great, man. It's just, again, Mitch McGovern just saw a one-on-one -on -one from, from the kick out. Onto the wing was a leading Silvani. And just back your players in one-on-one. -on -one. Kick it to their skill set, which is absolutely Jack Silvani's run and jump at the ball or lead at the ball. Ball over the boundary line off the hands of Fisher. Started well. Did Silvani two goals in that opening term. Ball to be tossed back in. Pitanay. Handball to Nunes. Birthday boy to Cripps. Hewitt along the boundary line. Saints on the bench. Oh. One out of bounds on the full. Umpire agrees. He's had a rough start to it. Lockie Fogarty just uh, coughed the first one up in the middle. As Dan Butler comes to the bench. Again with the rock in his shoe. A bit ginger. Hopefully not too bad for Saints fans. Ryan Burns goes up the line. Free kick in the marking contest going the way of King. Gresham wanted the overlap. Williams was awake to that. King pokes it forward to his skipper. The man of steel's got it at left half forward. Wax it to full forward. Wood in front. Doesn't fly. Newman stayed down for the Blues. Setterfield keen to see it across for a rushed score. So the Saints open with a couple of behinds in this final term. Now the gap to 13. spots of course in that defence Newman he is that sort of prime mover handling the kicking duties for most of the day Cripps just gets rid of steel in the marking contest strong work fair CV between the two of them Patrick Cripps Jack Steele one on one contest the ultimate competitor Jack Steele didn't like that I reckon he'll want another crack at a one on one contest against the Carlton skipper been opposed to each other throughout much of the day so far Wood stands the mark. It's now Cripps is called to go. Brother Josh playing in the VFL practice match for this. Uh, after this game here at Icon Park is uh, Patrick Cripps. He kicks up the line. Stepping through the traffic there nicely was Ross. Handball to steal. Who wheels around. Looked for support. Found it in Burns. And Ross has continued to run. Left foot kick. McDonald there all the way. Membry couldn't get there and Higgins was maybe a little bit of a breakdown in communication and Oscar picked it off nicely. Just like the vanilla and the Neapolitan ice cream, Oscar McDonald, isn't he? He's just the, the plain operator, but he gets the job done from my point of view. If I get the pick of the three, I'll take the vanilla. Here he is again. I told you, just what happens in front of you, just 
commit to Oh, gee whiz. Oh, As no, I say that. <laughs> he's turned it over. The ice cream is melting in front of your oh, eyes, I think, and, Nick. Uh, then he just uh, calmly gets himself out of trouble. Well done, Oscar. And he's also, so he's the vanilla in the sense that he's in the middle of everything at the moment as well, is Oscar McDonald. I thought about that phrase as I put it together just before I said I thought he, he's been good he's been calm he's been plain he's been efficient then he mucked it up but then he saved the day yep. again that's always the way he turned it uh, made it look pretty good in the end Williams a high ball inside forward 50 bounces off the shoulder of Kerno chasing it down was Durden and it goes out for a throw in at right half forward for the Blues both teams inaccurate in front of goal today 8-12-60 to 6-10-46 so again a little bit of rust Increased pressure around the ball than what they're used to at match simulations and trainings. Fogarty, Hamble and Nunes from the stoppage. Fisher has been lively as he so often is. Williams slips over. Fisher slips over. They've given it up here, the Blues. Burns there for the Saints. Tries to put the step on Boyd. Couldn't quite. He got the handball away straight to Nunes, who waxed it out of bounds on the full. Tried to spear the pass along the boundary line and cleared the paint. Wilkie there for the Saints. Oh, he kicked it straight between two teammates. Clark and Crouch. Clark ended up with it. Handball to Crouch. Caught by Chera. Just got it away, said the umpire. Fogarty got it from O'Brien to Boyd by hand. Back to the run of Lockie O'Brien. Goes inside the 50. Made Silvani work. Lean it there to knock it away from him. Kennedy's handball for the Blues. Straight to Clark. Silvani getting the back there of his opponent. Umpire said the tackle was okay. Just inside the 50 for Carl. And that was Lockie O'Brien's... Bread and butter, the ability to follow up. He was really clean in open space. Just that last little piece of the puzzle, the forward 50 entry kick, just couldn't quite nail it. But he's really improved after a shaky start. So the Saints pressing. Trying to cut into this Carlton lead. Carlton with five goals in the opening term. The Saints with four in the second. The Blues with three in the third. Doing bulk of the scoring in each of those quarters there is at the legend stand end o'brien has a go he was dispossessed caught holding the ball Not for the first time today no. unfortunately for Lockie o'brien yes that, that's the one isn't it he's he's only lightly built you've got to find a way in the contest at this level you've got to be able to find a way you're a full-time athlete the ability to put those focus areas in your game to work on a daily basis get the bump bags around you get coaches to tackle you under pressure get your arms free and fight through those tackles Another game going on at the moment out of Casey Fields in these practice matches. Melbourne by 40 points over North at half time. Plenty of football to come in the next couple of weeks in the build up to the 2022 AFL season through the community series in these practice matches available on KO Sports. Nick Barlow and Joel Peterson here with you at Icon Park this morning. Halfback is McKenzie for the Saints to Jones to Wood in the two-on-one. Blues numbers win out. Chera. Oh, kick just evaded. Oh. Fisher. Almost the, the ball fake there. He faked the kick in the end. Almost dropped it on the ground. Got it to Newman. He's tackled. And he's gone. Burns got him. And the Saints will take the advantage here through Higgins on the left boot. Awkwardly kicks to half forward and finds Gresham. Gresham's got Wood in the oh, pocket. Goes in that direction and finds him. That was class. Full of class and Mason Wood has worked hard across the day, so we get an opportunity here to go back and make good of that really hard work. The Zach Fisher effort was, yeah, something out of the Harlem Globetrotters. It's, I think it's a competing brand with the Sharon, but there is a ball out there that you can strap to yourself and it stays attached as you kick it. So he's uh, done a little manoeuvre there, which was absolutely outstanding. Full benefit, but now it's gone back the other way to Mason Wood. And Wood can't quite squeeze it home. So the margin back to 12. 8 12 play 6 12. So that the kicking hasn't quite been there for either of these sides so far. Saints with four behinds here in this term. As McGovern spins it in his hands at full back. Been good in that new recast in the intercept role for the Blues this year. Finds Fogarty. They generate some runs. Sarge and Newman got crunched. Just got away with it somehow. And then Saad turns the tackler. Newman did not see that coming. Again, Nick Newman, that big layoff last year. Yeah, he's put himself in a couple of situations today where he's been run down. and A bit worse for wear, as we see, as he trodges back. But 
He should be fine after dusting it off for a little while. From the stoppage, he got absolutely mauled in the tackle. And they're going to do it all again in the centre of the grounds. Free kick off the footy here. Paid by the out-of-zone umpire. And Hunter Clark just gives the umpire a little bit of a, <laughs> a spray. No 50 metres, so it has to be a little bit more defamatory than that, Trips according to, to the new rule. Saad goes inside the 50. Well, nicely roved by Silvani. He stepped through the traffic, almost opened himself up on goal there. Set a field to Kerno, hooks it back to full forward. Charging it down was O'Brien. Lays the tackle on Lena, locks it up at the top of the square. Really dumped into the numbers there, did O'Brien, but a good effort, a good contest as we watch the replay of the crunching tackle on Nick Newman, laid by McKenzie. Had a, a couple of big tackles late in games. Remember one against West Coast early in the season last year, Dan McKenzie inside the forward 50, kicked a match winning goal. I might be making this up, but somewhere along the line I've heard that McKenzie's nickname is Bull, and that might be why. But that, in, in the same breath, it might be completely false. <laughs> Well, if true, it's a good story. Yeah, and, I'll, I'll do if some true, digging. most are. Yeah, I'll do some digging. Oh, I just like to be open and honest and transparent because yep. I could probably get away with it, you know, being not true and saying it, but yeah, could go either way, that one. Say a lot with conviction and make it sound okay. I like that, Mick. Barlow We're all working back sports. into our craft. Absolutely. We're all working back into our craft in this season, February. It's early for everyone. Yep. Not only today with this morning's start, but in the season in the context as well. O'Brien at the stoppage to Cripps, tries oh to spit himself free, goodness. gets through the traffic, handball to Silvani, a Cripps tried to create something for Carlton. Silvani snap hits the post, but Jack has been very busy today. And if you're a young player at Carlton or a player in general that, that struggles in the contest and, and needs to understand how to get your arm free and avoid tackles and, and, and what work to do, Paddy Cripps has got you know the body to, to make that a real a grade part of his game, but I'd just jump in his back pocket. What do you do? How do you train it? Steele just got the handball away in the centre for the Saints. Campbell to Crouch. Back to Steele. It was one thing that Cripps maybe just over the last couple of years, he did look a bit tired and, and worn down and, and maybe didn't have that burst. He's had it in spades today. It's been really exciting to watch him go about his business in the middle. Remember, he's got it on the outer side for the Saints. To Sinclair in the outer of the centre circles. And the 45 to Clark. Two kicks from home. Long left football to the pocket. Woods in best position from the back. Hayes got hands to it. Long chases it into the pocket for the Saints. Chera met solidly by Campbell. Took the tackle on and not to his benefit. The fans in the legend stand don't like it. But Tom Campbell wins a free kick for the Saints. It's part of the game that absolutely has improved and, and become noticeably more efficient over the past couple of years is the tackling. And today we've seen it. There's been, again, there's rust with ball in hand and, and players not getting their arms free, but the ability to pin the arms and absolutely make the most of tackles is very evident across the last couple of seasons. Kicked one in the second term, going off the ground, Higgins! The door open for Jack Higgins and he waltz right through. And he pulls the Saints back. And they've got a sniff here in this final term. And it just all opened up for Jack Higgins there. It did. Opportunist player, opportunist goal. So front half or forward 50 tackle, efficient tackle. Kick it to the hotspot. Love the entry kick. So he was right on the junction of 50 and the boundary line and his ability to understand his limitations and not go for a long either point or out in the full and stretch his kicking distance. He just pulled it up and just four ironed it to the top of the square and gave them maximum opportunity. The bigs competed, Jack Hayes brought it to ground and the other Jack, Jack Higgins kicks the goal. If they add Jack Hayes to the list, it just adds another Jack to the mix there at St Kilda at Moorabbin and they've got a few of them. Yeah, they do. They've got more jacks than a playing card factory. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> it's we need two decks, I think, to get all the jacks. Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as they don't have any jokers, they'll be right. O'Brien inside the 50. Charlie's on the end of this. Great entry. There's a joker at every footy club. And I'll tell you what, Charlie Kerno could be the joker in the pack or the ace in the pack. Absolutely for Carlton as we just try all these different annotations of, <laughs> of uh, describing 
players and, and how, it, how it's all unfolding today. But Charlie Kernos, he's got better as the, as the day's gone on. Absolutely. Uh, he's kicked the goal, kicked the major. He had a missed opportunity here last quarter where from exactly the same position where he tried to come out like he has there. Can he make good on this one? So no. Charlie with his another shot. And he's put that one out of bounds on the force. Been a bit of a mixed bag today for for Charlie. Had one on the long range attempt to that end. A couple of set shots at the other end and hasn't snagged one yet. And again, that entry, Liam O'Brien, brilliant, brilliant ball inside. Uh, Lockie O'Brien, sorry, brilliant ball inside forward 50. He's great in time and space. And I gave him a little bit of a clip in terms of his last entry. So hand in the air, that's a great entry next time to make good on, on the previous entry from Lockie O'Brien. So Burns has got it for St Kilda on the outer side. He sits it up for Membry, allowed McGovern to come across, but Membry was strong in the air. And he's been good today for the Saints. You know what you're going to get from Tim Membry. Patton spins the ball in hand for St Kilda, looking to manufacture something going inside the 50. One kick game. Patton goes inside the arc. King the target. Along the boundary line was McDonald, who taps it across for a throw-in. Seven points. So, again, as mentioned at three-quarter time, some players will probably get spat out in the last 15 minutes of this game and rested, and it'll be interesting to see what both clubs do and, and how they set up in terms of either, either chasing the game, as the Saints are doing at the moment, or Carlton in terms of trying to save it and, and hold on to a lead. Blues clear out of half-back. Kick bounces out toward Kerner. Umpire pays deliberate. And the Carlton fans in the legend stand not happy with that. Their side leads by a kick. 15 minutes remaining here in this ball game. Sinclair chips it inside the 50. Looking for Campbell. Blues across to spoil it away. And they'll get another opportunity inside the 50 here, the Saints. able to lock it in still only the two goals kicked to the Royal Parade end which is rather remarkable St Kilda in the opening term kicked two to that end and we haven't seen one since it's been all at this legend stand end where the majority of the crowd is this afternoon diving on the footy there Campbell among it see the old red white and black of St Kilda among the majority navy blue of Carlton this afternoon in the stands. Chera from the stoppage. Ball driven down the wing for Carlton. Kerno can't take it with him. Ross scoots away with the ball. Handball to Patton, the Saints away. Patton goes inside the 50. King shaping up to Mark. Newman got two hands to it. Fisted it straight up and down the mine shaft. Steel, now long to Burns. Tumbles it to full forward. McGovern, great mark. A telling mark defensively for the Blues. What's he got? So Kilda have done a good job to lock it inside their front half here. Goes out toward the city side. Knocked away from Kennedy. Spilt to Sharman. Pokes it to Steele. The skipper steadies from 45. Eyes the sticks and levels things up. Fair finish. Jack Steele hasn't been as prolific today but still been involved to it to a very high level a couple of really intoxicating one-on-one -on -one battles with Paddy Cripps across the day Paddy's been absolutely outstanding but Jack Steele the ever reliable pops up there and uh, evens it all up so often just pigeonholed with that negating role and maybe just a blue collar operator shows a little bit of white collar class there does Jack Steele been a brilliant pickup. All Australian, the captain, led the league in tackles last year. 14 contested possessions a game. Kicked 13 goals from his 22 games, having played every game for the Saints too. So he does hit the scoreboard a little bit. If he could add that to his game, oh, he's already a weapon. What a weapon he'd be. Murkov in ruck for the Blues now. Has a second go at it. Tries to spike it forward back in his volleyball days, but it's also killed at Clark. Handball to McKenzie, turned over. Nunes forced the pressure. Now Cripps comes away with it. A couple of bounces as he shoots the handball to Kennedy. Durden's got it at right half forward for Carlton. 
Short lead from Fisher, eyes that off. Looks to the pocket, presenting up at the ball was Kemp, and he can't find the handle. Change of boots here for Brody Kemp in the last quarter. He's gone from the white and red to the all black setup. Playing pretty well in the white and red. I thought he might have maybe, stuck with that. Maybe blisters. You know, these AFL players nowadays, just a new pair of boots every week, so. Wearing them in. Maybe Brody's just gone. Got a bit of irritation on the heels from the first half. Nick Barlow with you here on KO Sports. Scores tied late in the piece here at Icon Park. Wood in defence for St Kilda. Can't take the mark. Wilkie's under pressure. Dragged to the turf. Umpire circles oh. and circles and says, oh, oh my. Gee whiz. That looked like a foregone conclusion. Yeah, they usually don't have great poker faces, the umpires, when they're about to give the uh, holding the ball. But he bluffed us all there because he uh, wrapped the arms to the chest and said, I'll throw it in the air. So up we go. Campbell in defence for the Saints. Steele fights for the football. So does Hewitt. Ross a clearing kick. Gresham tries to chase it down. Saad there, two absolute live wires. So too is Fisher, a oh, wonderful vision. Left foot kick, swung across his body into the corridor, finds Chera. Couple of goals in that third term for the boom recruit from Frio. Kicks to full forward, Saints with numbers, Campbell brings it down, Sinclair throws a boot at it, can't connect, caught holding the ball. Terrific tackling pressure. And an opportunity for Carlton to put themselves ahead once more. And it's Matt Owies. Like a cat on a hot tin roof there. And 50. There's the example I would imagine of player getting quite aggrieved with decision, verbalising that aggrieved nature to umpire. Umpire saying, come with me to the goal line, and Owies just pops in the easiest of goals. So Owies puts Carlton a kick to the good. And after the 50 metre penalty, the Saints pay full freight. And the pressure rewarded for the Blues. Matty Owies, he's running off as if he's severely sore, carrying a little bit of cramp or a bit ginger as he points to the little pistons below his waist and saying they're a little bit tight and a little bit sore at the moment. So he was very fortunate he got the luxury of a, a march to the goal line because he was sore 30 metres out. Would have made the distance, but would have been a far harder task than right on the goal line. So umpires, first time they have, to my knowledge, today, uh, given a 50 metre on the back of some aggression from player towards umpire. There's a bit of a, a change this year. It's not AFL making a bit of a stand. It's not going to be tolerated. It certainly wasn't there. So the Blues... In control, relatively speaking. Here's Saad out of the middle. Kicks to half forward. Kennedy's able to mark. Whoops the handball out wide to centre field. Dangerous kick. Kicks to full forward. Silvani was up. He couldn't take it. Hayes swung into defence for the Saints. Tumbles it out toward the wing. Williamson made a beeline there for Sharma to try and provide the smother. Had to go back at the ball and knocked it out of play. 22 travel. Six point game. Way of the Blues, so... St Kilda in front of the ball, looking for their forwards just to pull a little bit deeper, try and make it one on one. So a quick, hurried kick gives them an opportunity to score. Ball tossed back in. Oh, Higgins dumped into the turf by Cripps. That'll be a free kick. On the other end of the spectrum, Carlton are still happy to play six six six. They haven't dropped a spare behind the ball to try and protect the lead just yet. So Higgins, long high footy. King makes a run at it. McDonald did enough to knock it away. Kennedy at their feet. Newman's got time and space inside the back 50 and darts the kick to Williamson who juggles it in. Just with their ball movement now, little signs at the moment that they're happy to take a bit of juice out of the clock and try and protect the lead. There were a few options on the switch, but he's happy to go long down the line. So, Murkov is there. Steele <laughs> being tackled by Chera and Murkov. Just dropped it on the boot, got the kick away. Lena chases it to the boundary. Free kick as Higgins was being held without the ball. So, he rolls around onto the right boot. Sends it inside the 50. Weederings across to knock it down for Carlton. 
Oh, Williamson. He's got plenty of time and space. They've slowed down to a crawl in terms of the forward pressure here, St Kilda. Hayes is still out there trying because he's trying to press his case for a spot on the list. Now Wilkie. He darts it to the 50 for Higgins. And Higgins points immediately toward goal. And this would absolutely take his best effort, but I'd imagine he'd be looking similarly to the last entry from a similar range. It was just popped to the top of the goal square, so it's a little bit of a set play so often from this position. So Blues by seven points, having kicked one goal, one here in the term. Just pops it. Higgins tees it up, as you say, Mirko. A big run at it for Wood, went through his hands. Wiedering's there. He's tackled by Membry. Saints want holding the ball, won't get it. Gee whiz, Mason Wood had a really good look at that. And I think it caught, which it shouldn't have, caught the Carlton defenders napping. They were just assuming long shot at goal for Higgins. And Mason Wood just went through his mitts. So six minutes left, seven-point game. Nunes bangs it on the boot. There's Saints everywhere. Sinclair, handball to Sharman. Tries to measure the pass inside the 50. McDonald thumps it back the other way. A decisive defensive punch. Out to Hewitt, tried to link up with his former Sydney teammate in Newman. And now to Nunes, back to Newman. Just fashions the kick somehow across the body out towards Silvani. Just got to think their way through this to Blues because they had no numbers ahead of the ball and they rushed that. Charlie Curnow was met solidly and now yeah. a free kick to the Saints. Silly, they just didn't need to, to rush. All the St Kilda numbers got behind the ball, so they just had to calm down and find an option laterally. So Steele's got it right in the centre. Five minutes remaining, seven-point Carlton lead. Hill out wide to King on the lead. Not paid. Williamson worried him out of it. Williamson just got the handball away too. And again, it's Carlton hemmed in this right back pocket, trying to get something going the other way. Lean oh, it. Oh. Spoiled each other in the end. Yeah, he and Patton, a little bit of miscommunication there. And the Blues are able to sort things out. So, Cripps. Paddy Cripps just knew not to rush it and just bang it forward because... His spare players have got caught up around the ball, so of which Adam Chera was one. So Chera with the footy, called to move it on. Does so with a long kick inside the 50 towards Silvani. Wonderful floating mark in from Jack Hayes. One of the two train-ons out there. That was really well read. Back to Ross in the defensive goal square for the Saints. So a couple of the South Australians. Ross blasted out toward the wing. It's over the head of Patton and out for a throw in. So 26 gone. Carlton looking to hold a seven point lead. So in terms of structurally, they're pretty content still to have the equal number of players ahead and behind the ball. Kerry might have been grabbed high there. Cripps came up with it. But as I speak, Brody Kemp <laughs> made the 150 metre dash from goal square to centre half back just to sit in the hole. So free kick coming to Cripps here at the stoppage. Zach Fisher just works some time off the clock, so flat 30-minute quarters. And Cripps has got it between the wing and half forward. Blues with one goal, one here in this final term. The Saints have kicked two goals, four. Big pack inside the forward 50. Leanitz there, he stepped across the line. Underneath the Carlton players watching on up on the balcony in the administration building. Tom Campbell nominates himself for Ruck against Jack Silvani. Bradley Hill flying around the stoppage. Keen to get on the move. Fisher. Handball to Hewitt to Setterfield up and down the mine shaft. Campbell has another go in Ruck essentially, and it was against Silvani. Fisher along the boundary line. Hewitt hooks it inside the forward 50. That's not going to work out. Another good mark so taken by Battle. Intercept by Battle, whose direct opponent is sitting 150 metres up the other end. So whether Battle can just get up the other end and equalise that to give even numbers, we'll wait and see. Aggressive kick up the corridor. Cripps got caught with the footy, according to the umpire, and play on into the running machine in Brad Hill. And he's going to spread it wide. Ross marks in stride. That was like quarterback to wide receiver. Dropped it into the bucket, and Seb Ross was able to go. He wheels inside the forward 50. Hayes up in the pack. It's brought down at the back by Joyce who's been swung forward late for the Saints. Kennedy for the Blues. Steadies with a handball out wide but can't find a teammate on the end of it. It'll be tossed back in. So again, such important 
for so important for the, the players to understand the situation. Now Josh Battle is charging into his forward 50 to equalise that number to make sure that the Blues don't just have a plus one, a plus two to mop up and he rush kicks inside forward 50. Charlie Kerno's morning's work done, receiving some treatment on the bench. At the stoppage, Campbell squeezes it inside the arc for the Saints. Oh, big physical hit in Someone's there from Long. jumped on that, squirted it out. Fisher's in there, Crouch's in there, Clark's in there for the Saints. He's tackled by Boyd and Kennedy. And it's all locked up inside the 50 for the Saints. Minute to go, Carlton by seven points. What can the Saints manufacture? Clark at the stoppage, throws it on the boot, spirals it toward goal, minor score. And in fact, it's gone out of bounds on the foot. Yeah. Didn't quite squeeze yeah, in. Any chance, and again, the result isn't the end of the world, uh, isn't the be all and end all, but any chance you'd imagine just to scrub through for a point and, and a hope to turn over a kick in. Needed Jack Higgins to go for the seven point play again. Yes, Nick. he's played it once really well today. Oh, the runway cleared for Kennedy there, who's going to mark it half back and can just about ice the clock here for the Blues. Chamberlain calls him to move it on quickly. Kennedy whacks it up. The city wing. Durden was there. Handball to Fisher. Scrubs a kick along the boundary line. Taken by Wilkie of the Saints. Campbell by hand to Patton. And now to Sinclair. Aggressive kick up the middle. Longs up to meet it. But it's a winning start for Michael Voss as Carlton coach in this practice match campaign of season 2022. A tight tussle. It was inconsistent from both sides at times. And it's Carlton who prevails to kick their 2022 campaign off by seven points over the Saints. 9-13-67 to 8-12-60. Wouldn't say either side set the world on fire, Nick Barlow, but there was plenty of positives there for both. Yeah, there were plenty of positives, absolutely. Their best footy today, both sides, uh, showed you know, incredible talent. Poise, explosiveness, all the describing words that come with a very successful AFL team. But on the con contrary, there were some patches, some big patches from both clubs that would have them reviewing and understanding, OK, how could have we done that better? How could have we competed for longest and killed a first quarter? Carlton, second quarter, just um, faded out of the game in terms of their appetite for the contest. But all in all, I think a quite a productive day, not a huge amount to report injury-wise. Um, Which is some, a positive for yeah. both, coming off the years they've had. Exactly. So their best complement of players. There were some big hits and some big moments where hearts were in mouths around some key personnel. Max King went up and hit the deck pretty heavily at one stage. Mitch McGovern uh, similarly up the other end. So uh, both come through unscathed and, and would be very, very appreciative of the hit-out and take that into next week and, and then the season uh, after that would... You can see the, the VFL Saints about to go through their paces. So too the, the VFL Blues. So uh, Jack Silvani finished with two goals. So too did Adam, Adam Chera in his first game in Navy Blue. Matt Kennedy, Brody Kemp, Corey Durden and Matt Owies had two goals as well. For the Saints, two goals to Jack Higgins, their lone multiple goal kicker on the day. Campbell, Wood, Membry, Butler, King and Jack Steele with goals for St Kilda. Um, a couple of the notables from the game, Adam Chera's performance, Mick? Yeah, it was good, especially the first half. He was he was really noticeable in terms of his his impact around the contest. What I really liked about his game is, is he will complement Patrick Cripps as well as anyone that could complement Patrick Cripps. Got good footy now, does Adam Chera. Anytime the ball did hit the ground or, or spill out towards um, Paddy Cripps, Adam Chera knew to get over towards his chest and make it a really simple option for him because Paddy Cripps, that's his one, would get the ball and then just find... Uh, the feed off to a player in time and space or a player like Adam Chera that can take it, use his skill set of speed and run and, and break some lines and, and use his skill on the on the outside. And the Saints, we saw a couple of positional switches. Uh, battle, Josh Battle going down back was pretty solid for them. Bradley Hill uh, at, at half back as well. What did you yeah, take from, yes. from some of their changes? Similar story with Josh Battle, the one-on-one -on -one match up with Kurnow across the day. The, the points were, were probably shared half one goes the way of battle, who, who won some really significant one-on-one -on -one battles. Uh, pardon the pun, <laughs> but uh, genuinely intended. And then the second half, Kerno, having missed so much footy, got himself back into the game and, and showed just his, his athletic prowess and his ability to, to get the ball out the back and, and own the space where the ball's going to drop and, and make the most of, of some situations that he was given with fast ball movement uh, on entry in, into, into 
their forward 50. In particular, guys like Lockie O'Brien started to, to open up in time and space and, and use the ball, um, which then really complemented the way they played in front of the ball with Charlie Kerno on the lead. So Carlton are back in action. Uh, they've got a, their first community series game against Melbourne next Thursday. The Saints play Essendon on Saturday in that Marvel Stadium. The first month for the Saints, Collingwood, Freo, Richmond and Hawthorne. For the Blues, it's Richmond, the Western Bulldogs, Hawthorne and the Gold Coast to open the season. And, and both sides, I think uh, Michael Voss would have experienced the highs and lows of coaching today. A brilliant start for the Blues. And then, uh, the, the, the long periods where they they lost the ascendancy. It's uh, But a welcome return for him in, win in a winning way. And, uh, and only that can happen in... These games, the pre-season games, the precursor games to the, the season, it's not a punishment, I don't think, but the St Kilda side is running a lap. They're running <laughs> And running a lap with quite velocity as well. So they may not have hit their meterage in terms of hitting their distance required. Uh, so they are doing a lap yep. um, to top up their volume Seems in terms right. of what they may have missed with having extra rotations and players out there playing extra minutes, uh, uh, decreased minutes, I should say. See them just disappearing on the right-hand side of your screen. There's a couple of Saints down on the bench in front of us as we see them behind the goals there. Uh, Max King having a chat to Harry Mackay down beneath us as the Saints go through their paces. So it's Carlton who win by seven points. Nine goals, 13-67 to the Saints, 8-12-60. Uh, your Werribee side's got a practice match against the Blues VFL side yeah. tomorrow. Mick, you'll well, be back here. We do, yeah. So, well, Carlton <laughs> Reserves are about to play here, but uh, we'll be looking to play uh, those guys that aren't selected out of their VFL squad tomorrow. With uh, It's essentially a glorified match simulation session with our season kicking off a week after the AFL season. So... Exciting times ahead for, for all levels of football. Go well, mate. Good to be with you this afternoon. Thanks, this John. Morning. And I'm sure we'll cross paths as the season progresses. Absolutely. Michael Barlow, the former Docker and son, with you on KO Sports. The Blues make a winning start to their 2022 pre-season campaign by seven points over the Saints, 9-13-67 to 8-12-60. That's all from us here at Icon Park. Thanks for your company on KO Sports.